In this video, we'll see how to load MNIST data uh, into an IPython notebook and how to how to do basic uh, visualization of the data. Very basic. This is not a high dimensional visualization, by the way. So uh, we're getting this data from Kaggle. Kaggle is a phenomenal repository of great data sets. So this is, the, this is a page from which I downloaded. So I'll actually go to this page and show you. Um, so this is the page that I went to. This is called the Digit Recognizer Dataset on Kaggle. And it has two data sets, train and test. Um, we'll go and understand what training is, what testing is when we learn actual machine learning models. Right now, what you could do is you could just go and click on this download button, which will give you the data set. Okay, it's called train.csv. I downloaded this data set and I renamed it. I renamed this data as MNIST underscore train.csv. So I downloaded train.csv from this link and I renamed it. I renamed it. Um, as uh, mnist underscore train dot csv and it's in the same folder as this code uh, always remember your uh, your code needs to be uh, you need to mention okay let's go into the code actually i think that that's that's what simplifies the explanation so in this loading of kaggle data set we just downloaded the data from kaggle.com c digit recognizer data and i downloaded as i told you a while ago i downloaded the uh, train dot csv file okay i just click download here and i got the file now, having said that, now let's let's go to the IPython uh, notebook that we have. I'm importing standard libraries like NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib, the ones that we have seen in our Python courses and Python class. And these, these are very simple. These are very simple uh, libraries that are extensively used in machine learning and data science. Now, my data set is is a CSV file. My data set is a CSV file. CSV stands for comma separated values. So it stands for comma separated values. So which means imagine if I have a data like this, if I, if let's assume my tabular data, I'll show you a simple comma separated value. So let's assume I have feature one, feature two, feature three, and feature four. Let's assume my first row one is let's say two, 2.1, 1.2, 2.6. My, let's say my row two is three, 3.1, 3 3.2, and 3.6. In a comma separated values based file so the file is in a csv format okay for those of you who have never seen data science data sets this might be new to you a csv is nothing but if this is my actual data if this is my tabular data of f1 f2 f3 f4 or my features row 1 row 2 are my data points this is stored in csv as follows in csv the first row is 2 comma 2.1 comma 1.2 comma 2.6 sorry before this there is something called a header Header basically says what are each of the fields, F1, F2, F3, F4. This is called the header of a CSV file. In a header, you basically explicitly say what are the, what are the column names. The column names are F1, F2, F3, and F4. And the second row here is basically taking this value 2, 2.1, 1.2, and 2.6, and we are separating them using a comma here. If you have noticed, we are separating each of these values using a comma and hence it is called a comma separated values file okay now my third row my third row will look like this 3 3.1 3.2 3.6 again these are the same values as you see here it is exactly the same values but again as i just mentioned they are separated by commas so this is how a csv file internally stores data okay now you can read csv file in pandas very very easily it's literally one line of code you say PD here stands for pandas, right? Because we're importing pandas as PD. You just say read CSV. So you're reading the CSV into a variable called D0. And you've given the path, this is the file name. This is nothing but the file name, okay? So you're, take, you're saying read this file into this variable D0 and you read it as a CSV because this file itself is a CSV file, okay? And we just understood what CSV looks like. Now. Next thing, next thing that we do here is since as soon as I loaded this file, I want to print it and see if everything, everything looks decent, everything looks same. Okay, so let's go down and see the output of print d0 head. Oh, by the way, uh, the function head literally prints the first five rows. So what this says is print the first five rows, print the first five rows of d0. Okay, so let's see what it prints. It prints, it says that the first column is called label. So these are the head, this is the header. This is basically saying what is the column, what is the first column name, what is the second column name, 
third column name, fourth column name, etc. And it's printing the first five rows. Okay, the first column is called the label. In our MNIS data set, the label is what is the actual digit? Digit is it one? Is it four? What is the digit name? What is the what is the digit that it's representing? Okay, and pixel zero to let's see all our columns. So we have columns from pixel zero. If you notice here, columns from pixel zero here up to pixel 783. Okay, if you notice here, we have up to pixel 783. That means we have a total of 784 pixels. So our data set is like this. The first column is the label, which says what is the digit that it's representing. The rest of the columns, we have 784 columns with index from pixel zero to pixel 783. These 784 pixels are nothing but our 28 cross 28 pixels. It is the value of each of these and we we have shown how we can uh, how we can represent this as a single vector right by going row wise so first it stores all of these rows then this row then this row so on and so forth right that way i've created a vector so this is my vector this is my vector this is my vector of size 784 up to pixel 783 because it starts with zero you have only pixel 783 your total of 784 pixels with the label value as the first column right so now what I'll do here is I'll separate my label from the pixel data, right? So what I'll do is this. I'll create a new variable called zero and I'll store the label column, which is actually the class label. We have 10 classes here, right? We have class zero, one, two, so on, so forth up to class nine. So all these labels for every row, the corresponding label will go into a variable called L and I'm creating a new variable called D where I'm saying drop label drop label and keep every other uh, and keep every other uh, uh, column that we have so drop the label column is what it's saying okay now what we have is your l stores all the class labels your d stores all the data right so corresponding to di if i take the ith row of d its corresponding label will be in li this is important to remember because we'll keep reusing this right so I've just simply loaded the data right now. I've just uh, ensured that all my labels are in one variable. The data is in another variable. Now let's see if my data makes sense. Oh, okay, by the way, oh, so there's another very basic thing. What is the shape of D? There are 42,000 data points and each data point is 784 dimensions corresponding to the 28 cross 28 pixels, right? My L is just the label, right? The labels is just one column. So I just have 42,000 uh, rows of data with only one column okay so this is basically a sanity check to to ensure that everything is going well now let's see if i can plot a number and see if it makes sense right plot a number as in i want to see suppose for example uh, let's take index 100 okay in d100 right i have 784 pixel data right in the 100th index of my d similarly in l100 i have what is the actual label right I want to visualize this data, not visualize in the high dimensional sense. I just want to visualize the 784 dimensional data into a grid. I want to visualize this image. Okay. And I want to verify that whether the visualization that I notice is same as the label that is there. Okay. This is very simple code again. So I'm just using matplotlib and I'm saying the figure size should be seven by seven. Okay. I'm giving an index of hundred, right? So grid data is, so I'm actually getting the data. So this is one way you can say, get the data of the hundredth row, okay? And convert it into matrix and reshape it into 28 cross 28 matrix. In a single line, I'm getting the data of the hundredth row from D, right? IDX is hundred, right? I'm getting the hundredth row and I'm converting into a matrix of size 28 by 28. Once I've done that, now I'm, I'm using my, I'm using matplotlib. And matplotlib has a function called IM show, which can show images. And I'm saying the data for this image is the grid data. Is this 28 cross 28 pixels? And the color map, C map stands for color map. The color map is gray because I want to draw a grayscale image, right? So as soon as I do that, my hundredth index point looks like this. This looks like a nine. Now let's see what is there in L100. It should be nine, right? So L100 looks like nine here. Okay, so yes, my data has been loaded decently well. Now let's just change this index value here quickly. You notice, let's say if I take 150. Okay, let's just run this. Okay, this looks like three here, right? Visually it looks like three. 
and even the even in my label data, uh, label vector in my l vector okay my 150 value is 3 so data seems to be loaded well okay this is a simple sanity check to ensure that the data has been loaded so now let's do 180 this looks again like 9 and the data is 9 let's just say 1 okay i'm just running it through a few examples okay this looks like 0 and the value here is also 0 okay so this is a basic data ba basic sanity check and this is a simplest way to load this data because our data is in csv format here remember our data is in csv format here and hence loading this data became extremely simple in the real world if the data is in some other format if it's in a database loading it might require you to write special code in this case since pandas can easily read csv files we just loaded all the data in one line of code okay so this is a simple example of loading our mnist data and ensuring and slicing this data what is slicing slicing basically means i took the whole label column and put it in a variable called label and i drop label column rest of them i put it in a file called uh, i put it in a variable called d so i've, I've split my uh, my class labels and my data set uh, we'll see why that's useful later and i just wrote some simple code to visualize each of the images just as a sanity check so this is how we load our mnist data uh, in, in just a few lines of code. This is literally like 10 lines of code, right? Very, very simple code to load our data sets.